men! You're a manly man, aren't you? Yes, you are. I can see your muscles from here. You're a sexy, beautiful man with tons of rippling muscles. And I can say that without any sexual connotation because I'm also a super straight, not gay man as well. We manly men never cry. And we always get the girl in the end, too. I love knowing that my beautiful wife is at home slaving away over making me a sandwich. There better be no tomatoes on that sandwich, lady, or so help me God. And if anyone tells us we're not manly, well, we beat the ever living crap out of them. Manhood, where having a penis makes you better for some reason. Many of us have heard of the concept of toxic masculinity, or as the Good Men Project defines it, quote, a narrow and repressive description of manhood, designating manhood as defined by violence, sex, status, and aggression. It's the cultural idea of manliness, where strength is everything while emotions are weakness, where sex and brutality are yardsticks by which men are measured, while supposedly feminine traits, which can range from emotional vulnerability to simply not being hypersexual, are the means by which your status as man can be taken away. Basically, toxic masculinity is saying that anything outside of expressing violence or aggression or dominance isn't manly. And anyone who shows other emotions or anything coded as feminine makes you less of a man. This is not saying that all masculinity is toxic, just that some parts and types of masculinity are. Yet when a toxic male gets called toxic, they typically react, well, you know, toxically. They insult people talking about the issue and yell things like, Why do you hate all men? Why do you think all masculinity is toxic? They get so riled up about the issue. I mean, when Gillette released a video discussing toxic masculinity, these men demanded a boycott of the shaving company. Which frankly is fine with me considering it means that I just have to look for dates with clean shaven guys. But one argument they toss around quite a bit is, Well, what about toxic femininity? I mean, if toxic masculinity exists, surely toxic femininity is a thing. Now many others cry back, no, shut up, and go back to watching The Handmaid's Tale. But is that actually true? Is there really no such thing as toxic femininity? Is there a yin to toxic masculinity's wang? I mean, yang? Oh, I could have phrased that one better. Does toxic femininity actually exist? Well, yes, it actually does, but not in the way some would think. When some people think of toxic femininity, they get this image in their head. A man-hating lesbian that splits her time between making signs about protests, talking about veganism, and her lumberjack career. All men must die, but we are not men. Basically, what these detractors of toxic masculinity are reacting to is the fact that they are being criticized. Toxic masculinity usually causes those who have their masculinity questioned react with anger. That type of masculinity demands that you must always be the toughest of men. And to be criticized, especially by women, makes that attack to their manhood even more damaging in a toxic mindset. Yes, women workers do present problems, Joe. It's tough, I know, but there are thousands of others, just like you all over the country, facing the same problems. You see, toxic masculinity works to reinforce the idea of a vertical hierarchy, or an unequal social structure. We live in a patriarchy, or a vertical hierarchy, that places men at the top of society. Yes, we live in a patriarchy. Come on. Men are more likely to get a higher paying job, hold positions of power, and have their voices listened to in a simple conversation, amongst many other things. Women, by contrast, are seen as less worthy of receiving these positions or having their voices heard. Which is ridiculous, but again, how our society works. Men are told by society to be dominant, to always be in control. So when someone who displays toxic masculinity, which values looking strong at all costs, gets criticized by someone, especially a woman who is seen as weaker, these men react by insulting, belittling, or even outright attacking the person who they see as attacking them, but who is just pointing out a societal issue rather than attacking a specific person. I also should say that there aren't just men that are toxically masculine and men who aren't toxically masculine. There are just men who sometimes react toxically and sometimes don't. Some are more toxic than others, some are less but everyone can display toxic traits, whether they're actively trying to avoid it or not. But men who display toxic masculinity are trying to reinstate their manhood by acting aggressively and ignoring criticism. So when these men yell about a woman displaying toxic femininity, they're typically doing so in order to prevent any self-reflection and put the bad behavior onto someone else. I'm not the problem, you're the problem. These calls of toxic femininity aren't actually about toxic femininity at all, but actually reinforcing one's own toxic masculinity. So what actually is toxic femininity? Women! Boy, they sure are good to look at! I myself like looking at a good 8 or 10 for about 10 to 12 times a day! 
Yet don't you hate it when they get so uppity? An uppity woman isn't an attractive woman, that's for sure. Full of spite and vinegar, these women don't want to have kids but opinions. Certainly every good woman's nightmare. Yes, we know what makes a good woman. A dame who makes sure their kids are in bed every night, looks damn sexy in that nighty, and never talks about things like politics or work. If I wanted to see things from my wife's perspective, I'll go and look out the kitchen window. Women, cause having a vagina makes you silly. Toxic femininity has actually been a topic of popular discourse for a long time, going back to the work of early feminists, though it hasn't really always been called toxic femininity. Femin- femininity. Fem- f femininity. Remember that good men project definition of toxic masculinity? Well, if we flip that definition, as bust writer Katie Anthony did, we get a pretty good idea of what we're talking about. Toxic femininity is a narrow and repressive description of womanhood, designating womanhood as defined by cooperation, sexual subservience, status, and passivity. It's the cultural idea of womanliness, where the ability to please is everything, while troublesomeness is a weakness, where beauty and ability to make men feel good are yardsticks by which women are measured, while supposedly masculine traits, which can range from expressing anger to sexual independence, are the means by which your status as woman can be taken away. Toxic femininity is all about women being submissive, beautiful, and pleasant. Girls are taught at a young age to be pretty and demure. Those who display toxic femininity have internalized these messages so much that it becomes harmful. It's okay to want to be pretty, but the overwhelming societal message to be pretty leads women to things like eating disorders. It also discounts women who don't fit in the narrow mold of what society deems as beautiful as not worthwhile as women. Toxic femininity also does things like tell women to not be so talkative. It's why women have a lot more internal mental roadblocks that cause them to not want to share their opinions or speak out on issues. And when they do, they typically get yelled at or seen as less feminine. Going back to that meme we talked about. When we talk about toxic masculinity, people tend to assume that toxic means that these men are harmful to others. That their toxicity poisons those around them. That can quite often be the case especially because toxic masculinity relies on aggressiveness and violence, which can lead to things like gaslighting, domestic abuse, or rape. Yet talking about toxic masculinity is also about how toxic masculinity hurts men as well, the person who displays it. It's about the young boy who gets made fun of for crying, or the gay person who hates themselves for liking men, or a man who should find a therapist to talk about his emotions, but can't because of a lifetime of being told to suppress them. So too does toxic femininity hurt women who display it as well. Toxic femininity isn't about breaking the patriarchy as many people thought, but reinforcing it. By saying they should be beautiful and silent, women are being subliminally taught that men are superior, to benefit a man, and to never talk back if a man treats them badly or anything like that. That the roles of politician or corporate executive aren't for them. But both toxic femininity and masculinity reinforce men's roles as dominant in a vertical hierarchy. And yes, I mean the patriarchy. And both toxic femininity and masculinity reinforce each other, like a kind of Ouroboros. A woman is taught to be quiet, but if she does speak out, a toxically masculine man is taught to ignore or belittle her opinion. Women are taught to always give a man sex, but if she denies, a toxically masculine person can take it. The snake eats itself, continuing the cycle. And both toxic masculinity and femininity hurt those who display it. But toxic masculinity is talked about much more because, one, women have been talking amongst themselves in feminist circles about toxic femininity much longer and have fought against it for years. That's what all the different waves of feminism were about. And two, toxic masculinity, because it's rooted in dominance, aggression, and violence, presents a much more pressing issue. So the next time you start yelling about toxic femininity, maybe that means it's time to take a good look at yourself instead. Hey interwebs, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this and want even more analysis of geek topics on everything from Star Trek to DC Comics, or you want social and political analysis and discussions, or social and political discussions through geek topics, give my channel a subscribe. And if you want to actively help make my videos even better, consider giving to my Patreon page. Each and every bit helps make these videos truly awesome, and there are some cool perks and benefits of being a Patreon, like having your name listed below just like these wonderful, amazing people. And finally, I want to give a shout out to Patreon Stefan Schuchart, who is kind enough to be a Patreon at the Admiral level. Thank you so much, Stefan. Your support and the support of my other Patreons truly means the world to me, and it's what keeps me motivated as a creator. But regardless of if you subscribe or give to my Patreon, I hope that all of you live long and prosper.